It's time now for an in-depth look at the market action this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at QM Securities. Mr. Yu, thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So U.S. stocks were down quite a bit overnight uh, now that a rate hike by the Fed looks less likely. It's been a rough week so far in Korea, too. What's the story today? Sure. If you look at the uh, market expectation regarding the uh, rate cut, by the end of this year, market was expecting that about three times rate cut, which is about 0.75 basis point. Uh, however, because the better than expected labor data came out last Friday, uh, where the non-farm payroll rose 224,000 uh, in June versus estimation of 160,000, um, clearly the numbers came in better than expected. Uh, this is the reason why that the rate cut might not be happening as much or as fast as market expected, and that is putting some pressures. Uh, however, though, we do expect that rate cut will happen because uh, overall unemployment ratio rose from 3.6 to 3.7 percent, and also um, the wage increase by hourly has risen year on year by 3.1 percent, which is less than. 3.2 percent estimation. So clearly the economy is slowing down somewhat and therefore it does require rate cut. Uh, now with that, um, the overall market did correct it, um, but Korean market as well as most of the Asian market correction was much more severe than just that news of rate cut might be happening much less than expected. Uh, main reason for that is because of the uh, Korea and Japan um, having a difficulties to settle and there is a retaliation between these two countries in regards to the trade side as well. So because of this, uh, continuation of the market correction is happening. Uh, Kospi is down another 0.59%. Kostak is down another 1.63% after more than 2% decline yesterday. So continuation of the correction is happening unless there is uh, some kind of settlement between Korea and Japan in regards to this issue. Uh, also, the countries such as China is getting affected as well. China yesterday fell more than 2%. Today, kind of flat. Uh, Shanghai is down about 0.18%. Shenzhen is up 0.13%. As for Japan, uh, it did fall quite a bit yesterday, but today seems to be fairly flat. Uh, all in all, Korea, China, and Japan all are under the trade uh, problems at this current point in time, uh, which puts some pressures on shell price performance. You know, something that fits into all these uh, trade problems is uh, the Korean currency, which has been on a roller coaster ride. Uh, last month, we got almost to 1,200 won to the dollar, then back down almost to 1,150. Now we're back up to uh, around 1,180. What's causing this volatility, and what's your outlook for the Korean won? Right. If you look at Korea, uh, Japan, and China, uh, all these countries are heavily dependent on exports and trade. Um, because they manufacture goods and export it out to other countries, and that uh, puts in quite a bit of part of the GDP numbers. Um, so when you have issues in regards to the trade side, that export is continued to be weakening uh, due to, this, to the dispute between the countries. So for China versus U.S. and now Korea versus Japan, uh, these things will continue to put pressures on currency as well as the economic growth rate. Uh, now, some people are estimating for Korean um, GDP growth rate to fall up to as low as 1.5%. Uh, originally, at the beginning of the year, people were expecting to be around 2.8, 2.9% growth. Did go down to 25 and then got, went down to as low as 2% now. But uh, some people are saying even with this uh, new additional uh, problem happening between Japan and Korea, the growth rate might fall to 1.5%. Uh, clearly, that kind of low growth rate in GDP will put a dent on the uh, currency, uh, and, and this is why the currency seems to be weakening at this point in time. But clearly, though, um, we think that 1180 number it seems to be maybe too weak per se, uh, given that um, the economic growth rate might not be falling to 1.5%. That's probably overestimation. Uh, year on year growth rate should stabilize at 1.8% growth rate, which was the first quarter of this year. Uh, so, as long as 2% growth rate is expected, then currency should stabilize. But for the time being, the volatility will be expected 
due to continuation of trade disputes. Ryan, well, uh, Korean industry is worried about the trade dispute. Uh, the the, uh, the idea that this might be expanded to things like cars and steel. Uh, how are the markets of both countries reacting to this issue and how big of an impact is it really having? Well, clearly it can be a quite significant impact if this retaliation between two countries continues. Uh, we need to have the settlement between these two countries uh, in regards to the trade side. Uh, but obviously, the Japanese government is linking that up with the non-trade issues. Uh, the, the escalation between uh, two countries uh, has happened because of the disagreement in regards to uh, the, the two countries in regards to the war uh, settlement. Uh, so Japan is saying that you know they need to remove that. Uh, um, for, uh, from Korea in order for them to not uh, charge any additional tariffs or not selling these materials for semiconductor side. So uh, tension seems to continue to escalate because two sides seem, seem to show a strong uh, stance. Uh, they're not really, you know, putting it down to the uh, much minor level. Uh, so if there is additional measures come out to uh, retaliate further to auto and steel sector, that could be very negative for Korean economy as well. So we need to see some kind of settlement happening between two countries. Um, we do think that, though, uh, they will do so because um, the pressure from uh, U.S. will rise if the production regarding the semiconductor business is really less than expected. That will jack up the price level, and it could create inflationary pressure for U.S. as well as other major countries. Uh, so some of the pressure will happen. Uh, from U.S. side to Japan uh, to change this current uh, policies, as well as Korea, you know, coming in less less aggressive in regards to uh, this war damages uh, claim side. So uh, we would like to see some of the measures being settled uh, in the future, uh, but for the time being, you need a little bit more of escalation happening uh, because they need to show exactly how strong they are at this time. Uh, but at the end of the story. Uh, we do think that over the next few month period, uh, these two countries will come into some kind of agreement. Um, and after that, maybe Korea might be moving more aggressive in terms of localizing their parts. But for the time being, they both sides understand what the damage is at this point in time. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, that's where we're going to have to leave it uh, today. Thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate your insights. Thank you very much.